We're nothing without you. We're nothing without you. God, you see the hearts of men today. You see those that are hurting and struggling. But we stand in awe of you today. We stand in awe of you today, Father. Come on, sing this song. I stand, I stand.
I remember, and, and yeah, sometimes even the Bible relates stories to athleticism and things in the Bible. And, and I've been in situations where I've been in games where, man, it don't look good. But all of a sudden, something happens. Things start clicking and you start doing things right. And all of a sudden now, all of a sudden now, you look up to the score and you're in the lead again. And that's the way it is in our walk with the Lord. And today, we just got to, these that have come and we're going to pray, we, you just got to just relax in that thing. Whether it's something waiting on the doctor or something informational on, on, on a biopsy or waiting on this or how are they going to handle this or how am I going to get through where I am and my relationship and, and all these things come in. Instead of all that today, I want you to just think of one thing. I want you to think of this. God is in control. He is watching you. He's sitting on the throne. He has angels surrounding you. And no matter where you are right now, He's leading your path. And those of you that are in the congregation, I want you to stretch your hand forward as we pray. We're going to pray, Father, right now. God, you see every need here from health. Those that need a touch in their health, in their physical bodies. To those that need relationship help, God, those that need help in, in, in their finances, Lord, those that need help in all situations and walks in their life right now, you see the need right now. God, your word says that you, you know what we have need of before we even ask. You know it. Right now, God, we're praying that you hear our prayer today. And that you touch the lives of these that have come forward today. God, if you don't fix it right now, if you don't do it immediately, give them the peace to know that eventually you will take care of it. God, give us a peace that passes all understanding. Give us that joy that's unspeakable and full of glory down inside of us that Satan cannot take away. Give us that strength to take the next step to move forward. God, I just thank you today that you're doing it. I feel it right now, God, that you're moving amongst the people. God, you're moving in the lives, and you're sending ministering angels to speak to them right now, to encourage them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God, we just thank you right now. We give you praise and glory in your precious name. Thank you for hearing our prayer in your precious name. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.
Church has its ups and downs. This is one of the ups. <laughs> I really, really feel that God is going to touch somebody today in a special way. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here today. And before we take up the offer, I want you to take your neighbor by the hand. Pray with me. Father, right now. Thank you. Thank you, God, that we can come to a place together. And you meet us there. God of all gods, King of all kings. And you grace us, Father, with your presence. Ready and willing and very capable, very able to change our lives. To help us in our situation. To give us life where we don't seem to have life. And to give us encouragement where we need courage. Thank you, Father. And Lord, from this moment on, God, you're doing your work. I know you are. I feel the Holy Spirit all over this place. But God, that one that is just not real sure. God, make them sure today. Touch them, Father. We just pray in a special way. God, we thank you. We pray it. We know you hear our prayer when we pray. We give you all honor and praise in your precious name. Amen and amen. If you believe that today, say amen. amen. Give God a hand clap of praise today. We're going to wait on you for tithes and offerings today. We just, you know, one of the things that we have never, ever, ever have had to do around here, and I don't believe we ever will, is to come and beg for money. We just never do it. God's blessed. He'll continue to bless. But what we have done here is we always present the need. And if I don't present the need to you, some, some of you won't know, but there's a cost coming up, and it's homecoming. And sometimes it's usually between one and $2,000 to do homecoming like we do. So that's out there. We, we found out, when was it, Joe? We found out last week or week before. How many know this building God gave us? Do you believe that? Well, it's got some structural problems. We've wanted to work on it for a long time, but we've not been able to because it hasn't been ours. But we found out that we have termites. And we've got to get those taken care of right away. And that's $1,300. You may say, Pastor, why are you doing this to us? I'm not. Remember, I'm not worried about it. How many know God's going to take care of it? I don't have any worries whatsoever. But my job is just to present it, put it out there it's for you to pray for, pray about it. And these are the things I need you to pray for. We need you to pray for. They're coming. But God will provide. He will take care of us. And, and then some. And I know he will. Let's bow our heads and pray today. Father, we thank you. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to bless what comes into the storehouse. God, you've always been so faithful to us. And, God, we have no fear, we have no doubt, Lord, that you're going to come through and you're going to do what needs to be done. God, bless the people. Father, you have continued to bless when there doesn't seem to be any oil or any bread in the cupboard. God, you always seem to put it there. And today, God, I just thank you that you'll continue to do it. And I just ask for a special blessing on all those who give. Lord, encourage them in their heart. And Lord, those who can't give, God, reach down and begin to speak to them. Father, we just thank you today. We ask for wisdom and knowledge, Lord, to use everything that comes into the storehouse. Use it in the way that we should to further your kingdom. God, we just give you praise. We give you glory today in our giving in your precious name. Amen and amen. If you believe that, say amen.
Bo, it's your birthday. Yep. Happy birthday, Bo. <laughs> um, uh, Jilly, right? No? Your point. Abby. Abby's. That's right. It's Abby's birthday. Happy birthday, Abby. And I know we got one right here somewhere back there. Madison. Madison is seven now. Happy birthday, Madison. this Wednesday at 8, because it starts Thursday. So, uh, yes, Tammy? Yeah, you can just put a wanna at the bottom, though, so that we know, okay? Um, and then that starts Thursday, I believe. Is it at 6.30? 6? Uh, six? Uh, we'll find out Wednesday. I did, I looked in there, and it wasn't a time, so. 6 to 8.30? Well, one page wasn't. I don't know the other pages, if it had it in there, but anyway, that's Thursday. And then um, uh, this coming Saturday, ladies, is the simulcast at Indian Creek. Uh, it's Beth Moore simulcast. It's from like, uh, people start getting there at 9, it starts at 10, and it's from 10 to 4. Um, they provide lunch. I mean, you have to pay for it, but it's not very expensive, and it's just a full day of ladies um, with preaching and teaching and um, fellowship. And it's just fun. It's just a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard Beth Moore, but, but she really can't bring it. You, you will be blessed. So that is Saturday. If, if you, any of you ladies would like to go, let me know. Um, we'll arrange what time, you know, where to meet and everything. Um, I don't have a sign-up sheet back there because I figured you can just either let me know on Sunday, today, or Wednesday, or call me. You know, we'll get together and um, figure out a time to meet. And then homecoming's quickly approaching, like Pastor said. Uh, it is, what, two weekends or what? Not next weekend, but the next. So it'll be here before we know it. And um, all the information you need to know is in there, but there's some sign-up sheets in the back. Uh, we need, we're doing our pitch in on Sunday, so we just like to have everybody sign that to um, know what they're bringing. Write down what you're bringing if you can. And then um, the church will be providing the chicken, of course. Yes, Dean? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's true, Dean. Sorry, I forgot about that. But you do provide that all the time. We will have to. This year, we will have to plan a whole lot more than we did last year. Okay. So if anybody else wants to pitch in with Dean on that, that would be awesome. Um, like I said, the sign-up sheets are back there. There's also sign-up sheets back there. Brian had made some for uh, workers, and um, they're nicely laid out back there. So be sure to sign that. You know, for if you want to work on Saturday, Sunday, whatever. There's sheets back there. So um, try to get them before you leave. I mean, I know it's a lot of people, but try to hit them sheets before you leave so that we know what's going on. Okay, I think that's all I have. Emma is going to be singing for us this morning.
we would only realize the power of being on our knees and praying. I mean, know the power of prayer is so important. Very important. We're going to do this song because we've had a request for several weeks to do it. I know you're looking for the words. It's one we haven't signed for a long, long time. It'd be in the back. This song says the blood is still there. Isn't it good to know that even in our, how should I say, in our humanness, okay, in the mistakes we make and all the things that happen in our lives, we still can trust and know that the blood is still there. No matter what happens, we're saved and on our way to heaven and the blood is still there. So listen to the words as Larry sings this song.
dismiss our kids. And we, uh, Jimmy is going to be doing preteens. Let's give Jimmy a hand. He's stepping in and working with them. Brother Joe, where's he at? All right, he's already back there. Man, he's ready to go. They're going to play a song. We want the little ones to go ahead and take off. Get out of here.
And sometimes we sit back and we, we're too lackadaisical. We sit back and we don't really, really fight against the plan that Satan has. Satan's plan's intact, my friend, let me tell you. He's got a plan and he's got it manned. See, sometimes we make plans and we can't go through with it because we don't have the manpower. But how many know Satan has the manpower? And he's got his plan intact and he's got it manned and he's ready to do business and he's ready to do business every day. And God spoke to, these, to me this week and usually I'm one of them kind of guys and as a kid, I heard these words all the time. Will you get out of my way? How many of you have been in prayer time and God spoke to you and said, Will you get out of my way? Well, today's message is different. God spoke to me and said, Will you get in the way? Look at your neighbor and ask him, Will you get in the way? When God spoke that into me on Monday, I thought, Lord, you're usually telling me to get out of the way. And now you're saying, will I get into it? What do you mean? What are you talking about? God, what are you doing? And God began to speak to me and he began to say, this world is sin sick, man. It is wretched. And our world is falling apart all around us. Our families are, are deteriorating from the inside out. Our school systems are the way they are because the church world has begun to pull away from the things that are important, the foundations of teachings and getting our children in the church and letting them realize that God's in control and we need to depend upon Him. We're losing ground. We're not doing what we need to be doing. And somehow, some way, the devil's plan is intact and we are not getting in His way. Ooh, I can stop right there. Church after church after church that I went to and we traveled to and we went all over this the, to the Midwestern states and we traveled and we seen church after church that's so focused on themselves and getting money and doing everything they can to raise themselves up and forgetting about the most important thing and that is getting in the way of the devil's plan. And God spoke to me this week and he said, I need people to step up. I need them to get into a situation to where they can step in and get in the devil's way. And I asked God, I said, Lord, if it takes my life, help me get in the way of the devil's plan. This challenge is for all of us today. I have heard this from the moment. See, y'all know, I, 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 I used to have pew back. You know what pew back is? That's where you sit in the pew so long in the morning that you, you get up and you can't hardly walk. That's pew back. As a kid, man, I lived in the pews. As a kid, I slept in the pews. As a kid, I had, I've told you before, I had a drug problem. I got drugged to church every time the doors were open. And you know what? I turned out okay. And did I fight it at times? Yeah, I fought it at times. Did I fight? Did I make my mom and dad's day miserable at times? I'm sure I did. And guess what? I've gotten it back a whole bunch of times. But we need to get to the place to where we start to focus on what can I do to get in the devil's way. He has a plan and I've got to mess it up somehow. You know, every time you do anything in athletics, if you're playing an opponent or if you're coming up against somebody, they have a plan. And their plan is to pick on your weaknesses. Playing softball, the first thing you do when you get together, the guys and the gals on, on Sundays, we'd always get together. And as they're getting ready to bat, we would say, hey, if you can't hit the ball that way, because that guy's not very good. Now that sounds bad, but that's a plan. That's a strategy. Find the weakness. Satan is out in the world today and he has a plan and he's finding the weaknesses out in the world today. And the sad thing is, one of the weaknesses is the church. Shame on us. Shame on us for being weak and standing back while Satan moves and does his thing and us not getting in the way. Shame on us. Go with me, if you will, to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Some of you don't read your Bible much. That's in the Old Testament. 
Just trying to help you out. If you can take Ezekiel out of the Old Testament and put him in our world today, put him right here in America today, he would be what we would call a street preacher. He would be that guy that's downtown preaching on the corner warning us of what's to come if we don't change. And Ezekiel was that man for that time. He went in as Israel was in a bad situation. Israel had, just like we are today, Israel had turned their back on God. They had moved away from God. They got laxing days ago. They got to a place where they were comfortable in their living. And Ezekiel was the prophet that God would speak to and say, you need to tell them. And Ezekiel was like today, like I said, a modern day corner preacher. And he had some words to share with people. And I found this through the Word of God. And, and God spoke to me about this, this, this passage right here. We're going to preach on this today. And we're going to really learn something today from this. How many are there in Ezekiel 22? Yeah. We're going to start at verse 23. Here's what he says. And I'm reading now the New King James. So it may really look different. And the Word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man... Say to her, say to Israel, you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of your prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Does this sound like us today? Our world today? Listen to this. Her priest. Oh, now we're talking about the church. That's not what that says, is it? Surely not. Her priest have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy. Nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Does that sound familiar? Her prophets plastered them with untempered martyr, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not even spoken, the people of the land had used oppressions, committed robbery, sound, sound familiar, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Grab a hold of verse 30. Hold on to it. Sink it in your heart. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. I'm looking for someone to get in the way. I'm looking for someone to stand in the gap, to make a difference, to make a wall. But I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. I worry sometimes about the wrath of God. Sometimes it's wonderful to come together and preach about joy and preach about happiness and preach about the things of God. But sometimes we can do that so much that we, we get this false sense that, that everything's just wonderful. And we got to realize that this world, Satan's got a plan and it's going on. And the only thing that's keeping us from the wrath of God is his grace and mercy. As he sits on the throne, can you imagine the times that he looks down on his church his son's pride. Grab a hold of this. See, we need to bring this down to earth. If my son was getting ready to get married, some of you really need to take a hold of this. 
And I began to watch his bride to be. And I saw her slipping around on him. Cheating on him. Treating, treating him awful. Disrespecting him. Going into different places at different times at night and then coming back and acting like butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. But I see it all. How do you think I would feel? That's exactly what God sees when he looks down on his church, his son's bride, and he sees what we're doing. I can only imagine the conversations between God and Jesus because God is a God of wrath. I know he's a God of love, but let me, let me read some things to you in the Old Testament. He's a God of wrath. And we're lucky. We are so lucky that Jesus is our our our, our he's our he's our uh, uh, he's our judge and he's our jury and he's the one that sits next to the Father. And when God raises up His fist and says, "I'm done with this thing," Jesus stands up and says, "Hold on, hold on. I paid a great price for them." And I know there's conversation that goes on, and sometimes even the Holy Spirit probably has to say, "Now, fellas, come on, let's just calm down." See, y'all don't see it this way, but this you need to grab hold of this. Because the Bible says he's our advocate. He's sitting there saying, hold on, don't, don't. In the old days, did God just reached out, take his thumb and just smash you in the ground. How many know that? Or he would just stand up and say, you know what, I'm done with them folks right there. If you're going to get on my side or not, you better get on. you better, you got five minutes to decide. I'm going to get ready to swallow you up. That's the way God used to work. But when Jesus come along, Jesus said, I'll sit here. Uh, I paid a great price for them. I'm going to work with you on this, God. Don't, don't destroy them. And it's the grace and mercy of God that has kept the wrath of God coming to us. Amen. And I sit here today, and I, and I grabbed a hold of this passage, and it spoke to me. And God said there's four things that, that we need to grab a hold of that's happening. And, and, and this stuff that I'm giving you now is free, so just grab a hold of it. you have to pay for the other stuff later. But, but listen to what happened in here. Well, during this time, this is exactly what's happened in Israel. Number one, they're giving in to idols. They're replacing God. See, there's a real problem when we start replacing God with stuff in our life. See, and, and look at your name and say, this hurts, but it'll come out okay. Some of you got all kinds of pain on your face. But sometimes we need that little jail, you know what I mean? That little prod. And we, we've gotten, the church has got to the place where we've, we've replaced God with stuff. Now let me, let me tell you how this works. Larry and I, and I use this as an example because it, it worked. Larry and I was traveling all over this Midwest, okay? All over, every kind of church you can think of, we've been there. And every time we go into a different type of church, I see God being replaced by man's stuff. We're good at that. I worry about it here, and I watch it, and I pray, and I say, God, don't let us ever put something in, in place that takes a place of you. We need you in our services. We need you in what we do. We, in our own lives, and these people, they, they went to idols, and they went to replacing God. God wasn't good enough anymore. They began to do things that they needed to do, and, and they started replacing God. Doesn't that sound like America today? It's no more God. Let's replace Him with Allah. Don't get me started on that. I'm waiting. I need to hear an amen. amen. Because I'm going to tell you why. I'm not one of them passive Christians that sits around when somebody starts talking about Allah and they want to argue about it. I'm going to argue with them. Amen. Because you know why? I know there's only one God. Amen. And that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. There is no other God. Amen. There is no other God. And he cannot be replaced. And I cannot compromise with you. And I will not compromise with you. Amen. I serve that God and that God alone. Amen. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> we are replacing God. Sexual immorality was going rampant in this, in, in this time. And it's, it, it, you look at the moral decline of our country today. This will startle you. 
How many, how many of you know what's the? I, I, I'm, I'm losing a train of thought on the on the name of the the brothers thing that that's huge in America. What is it? No, 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 no. It's where the religious men all get together and millions of them march on Washington and promise keepers. Thank you. Did you know I read an article the other day that the last time they had promise keepers in. Indianapolis, I don't remember, it was a year or two ago, that on the internet service in the hotels downtown where millions of men had marched into Indianapolis, on the internet services, they watched it. They watched it. The porn size increased drastically. Men coming into the promised land, coming together for the right reasons, but they have problems. They're immoral in their hearts and they can't stop what they're doing. We're living in a world today, if you just look out and, and, and you see the things that are happening, see some of you, and, and guys and gals, it's gals too, don't, don't, if you have this problem, I'm not, I'm not condemning you, I'm saying this is what's happening in America today, we gotta get a hold of it. We got to start getting on our knees and getting through these things and fighting through these things. If we need a brother or sister to lean on and say, I need you to keep me accountable, keep me off of the uh, computer. There's some people I counsel, I say, you know what? Just stay off the computer. Well, I can't do that. Well, yeah, you can. If you truly want to get through this thing, get off the computer. Instead of getting on the computer, pray. See, there's things we can do. See, some folks don't like us preaching, but I can't help it. This is coming from God, so you're just going to have to get it. Okay? I can't help it. Sexual immorality is, is running rampant. And with the internet service and all the things we have, it's just it, everybody's experiencing it in some way. And God looks down on it and says, that's not what I designed. Amen. To go around cheating is not what I designed. Jesus tried to teach against it. I'll get off of that. Some of you are squirming in your seat. <laughs> Forsaken God. This is a time frame where they just forsake God. They turn their back on Him. The very God that brought them out of everything they went through, they're turning their backs on Him. They're not even looking to Him anymore. It's all about my life. What can I get? It's all selfish living now. I'm comfortable where I am, forsaking God. And then the last one we're going to talk about, then we're going to move into a good, good, good part of this, that we're going to find some answers. Unholiness in the church. Man, oh man, oh man. Some of you are going to think I'm picking on the Catholics, and you know I don't. But how much unholiness has started to happen in the Catholic church? How much has been going on? And you say, okay, that's just because it's been exposed in the Catholic Church. You're right. I, I would venture to say, I know, I know for a fact, I know several ministers who have given up the pulpit because they couldn't control themselves. Unholiness in the church. Unholiness everywhere we turn around. The scripture says that, that you don't even know the difference anymore. If you read that verse 26 again when you get home, it says you don't even know, you don't even explain to people anymore in the church what the difference is between sin and not sin. You're not even preaching anymore. Oh man, I'm going to go ahead and say it. You don't think we've gotten bad? How about homosexual ministers? How can that happen? Come on folks, how can that happen? You say, Pastor, you're bashing the homosexuals. No, I'm not. I'm saying that sin. I love the homosexual. I'll go to the next thousand miles with them, but I can't approve of their sin. And to put them in the pulpit? What are we doing? What is happening in America? What are we doing today? We are unholy in the pulpit sometimes. No wonder we're in the shape we're in. And we're standing back and Satan is busy. And his plan is going through and we're not getting in the way. I started thinking about some of the things. Man, we have abortions being approved by churches now. And, and, and these positive thinking preachers. I just want to take my mic and go, bam, right on top of the head. Well, they must be successful. Look at their church. 
Jesus warned us about that. Be careful. When they start tickling your ear and they start telling you all the things you want to hear and nothing but positive things come out of their mouth and they're not explaining to us what's the difference between sin and not sin. And when they're not preaching from the pulpit the truth, God said, this is wrong. Quit doing it. Amen. And when I stand here and I think of all the places that I've been and I've heard the preachers, man, they sound so good and people leave and the churches are full and you're like, man, they're really successful and all the while they're not successful, they're missing the mark. You say, oh, we're doing everything right here, ain't we? No. But you know what? We're trying. But you know what? We're praying. But you know what? We're going to preach the truth. If it gets down to one or two, I told Dina one time, I said, if I'm just preaching to you, guess what? You just won't have to listen to me. Because I'm preaching the truth. Amen. I'm not going to give you nothing that ain't in here. And you know what? It may hurt, but guess what? I'll hug you. I'll love on you. I'll walk through it with you. I'll lick your wounds. I'll do everything I have to do to get you where you got to go. I'll love you through it. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. That's the way it has to be. There is so much unholiness in the purpose of the If it was not for the grace of God, my friend, I don't know what he would do to us. You say, Pastor, this really sounds bad. You've really painted a bad picture here. Well, let me tell you something. You don't ever forget God is still in control. God still has his people that are listening to him and doing what they need to do. I want to share some things with you. Let's talk about some people that got in the way, first of all. Moses was one that got in the way. See, God came to him and he said, look. He said, I got a job for you to do. What Moses do? Just like we do. I can't do it. Some of you, God's coming to you and say, hey, I want you to walk this way because I got something for you. I, I'm going to lead you, so just let me have your life and, and head this way. And we're all the time saying, God, I can't do that. And Moses stepped out on faith, and guess what he did? He said, I'm going to get in the way of the devil's plan. The devil had a plan against uh, Israel. He said, I'm going to keep them in bondage. I'm going to keep them where they need to be. I'm not going to let them get loose, because if they get loose out of that lineage, and that freedom of that lineage is going to come Jesus Christ. And the devil's plan was, I'm going to keep them right where I need to keep them. But guess what Moses did? Stepped out on faith and said, I'll tell you what, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if I got the talent to do this. I don't know if I have the ability to do this. I can't even speak the way you want me to speak. But guess what? On faith, I'm going to step out and I'm going to get in the devil's way. Amen. And Moses did it. Oh, then we, we talk about a couple others. Man, I love David. David was in his own way most of the time. Some of you know what I'm saying. That's me. Sometimes I'm in my own way and God looks down and, he, and I know he's giggling. You ever seen somebody just all tangled up in something and they look funny trying to get out of it? Sometimes God looks down and he sees us all tangled up and he's laughing and he said, when are you just going to get out of your own way? Get out of your own way and get in the devil's way. God said, get out of your own way and get in the devil's way. David was one that would do that. David was a man of obedience. Man, he stood before Goliath. Remember this, this, this wonderful story. It's in the Bible and it's used so many times because it's so powerful. As he stood before Goliath, uh, the little man that he was and the little guy that he was, he stood before Goliath as the whole country was held at bay because the devil had a plan that if I could get Goliath to do what he needs to do, and I can get him, and there, there's nobody over there that I'm worried about that's going to get in my way. Can you imagine the devil as he stood there and Goliath was standing in the valley? And the devil smiled and said, there ain't nobody going to get in my, the way of my plan. Wrong. Guess who showed up? Little David. The little shepherd boy. The little redhead. Bible says he was rusty in sight. That means he's redhead. How many redheads we got in here? Pam ain't raising her hand. She's a redhead. How many of the redheads got bad tempers? Amen. See, I had a little red tinge of my hair when I was little. 
And my mom used to say, I'm glad you're not fully reared. With the temper you got, it would be awful. And David shows up and he says, what, what's going on here? And his brothers got mad. They said, just shut up. You, you don't know nothing about what's happening here. You're too young. You, who do you think you are coming in here thinking you're going to stop this thing? And the devil comes to us sometimes, and you know he does. He comes to us and says, who do you think you are trying to get in my way? And they looked at him and they said, David, just keep your mouth shut. Go on. David said, no, I'm not keeping my mouth shut. He said, I serve a God. The God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And he said, who is this uncircumcised fool? That's standing out there in the valley yelling out and saying, who, who, who is God? Guess what David did? Got all reared up. He said, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to mess up his plan. And what happened was Saul said, look, if you're that anxious to go do this, I don't want, son, I don't want you to get killed on my watch because it's going to look bad if I send a boy out. So here, put all this equipment, put all this stuff on so you'll be protected. David put it all on. David shook it all off and said, I don't, I don't use that. I'm going to use my own stuff. David stepped out into the valley. He said, you looked him right in the eye. Read it. He said, I'm here to do one thing, and that's kill you. Because my God is the God of all gods, and he will deliver. And as he stood in the way, he got in the way of the devil's plan. We all know how it turned out. Oh, Goliath was killed that day. And the old devil, can you see? <coughs> Curses, spoiled again. Who used to say that? What was the series that was on? And every time something would happen, was it Batman or something? One of them used to curse us, foiled again. Oh, you all get it later. <laughs> then there was Gideon. I love Gideon. He reminds me of myself so much. They're living in bondage and the devil's got a plan and he's, his plan is working perfect. Gideon's all wrapped up and tied up, hiding in caves somewhere. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord comes and says, I need somebody to get in the way. And, and old Gideon says, well, it can't be me. And the angel says, no, you're a mighty man of valor. Some of you don't realize you, you are a mighty, mighty person of valor. Some of you don't realize the power you have. And Satan don't want you to realize it. Because guess what? When you realize it, you're going to get in his way. Gideon got in the way. We all know what happened there. Then let me share this before we go to the final part of this message. I want to talk about somebody who really got in the way. That's my Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, I'm going to tell you, the devil had a plan. His plan was, i got to stop this guy. His plan was that when he's born, I'm going to have all the babies killed. I've got a plan and I'm going to put it intact because I cannot let the Savior, the Christ, make it through. I've got to stop his plan. And as they had a meeting in heaven and God spoke and Jesus raised his hand and said, I'll go get in the way. I'll go get in the way. I'll get in the way of the devil's plan. And as he began to grow and as he began to do the things he did and as he went through life and started getting in the devil's way how many know he really made the devil mad because he got in his way a whole bunch of times Amen. he said I'm willing to get in the way even if it takes my life I'm willing to get in the way and Jesus got in the way of the devil's plan and even though we crucified him even though we tormented him we tortured him he stayed in the plan he stayed in what he needed to do and he got in the devil's way and today you and I are saved and on our way to heaven and it cannot be taken away from us because Jesus got in the way. Now some of us don't realize this. But Satan's got his plan intact today. I'm on, now, I can, now I can get real personal with you. He wants to kill you. He has three things in mind. His plan has three things in it. If you don't believe me, read John 10.10. 10. He wants to steal from you, kill you, 
will destroy you. That's his plan. And see, here's the scary thing. God really began to work on me because I, I spend every day fighting against the devil to, for me, to take care of me, to keep myself going. To keep. But one thing that I've, I've really lacked and I've saw it in my own life is I have lacked to see I need to get in the way of the devil's plan for my children, my grandchildren. I need to get in the way. I'm standing back and I'm watching things happen. Jesus gave everything that he had and he gave all of those things for me and I'm standing here today and I need to get in the way. I need to get in the way of the devil's plan for you. If it takes more time, if it takes my life, if it takes every waiting moment of my time to get on my knees with your face in, in front of me and praying and saying, God, I will stand in the gap. I will be that one that will get in the way of the devil's plan. See, the day we've gotten soft, if we have to stay up late and lose sleep for praying for somebody, can't do that. If I stay up late praying for somebody, that means I'm going to have a hard day tomorrow. If I get up early and I get on my knees and I begin to pray for people and if I begin to pray for my grandchildren or if I get down on my knees and I begin to seek God for my children and I begin to uh, cover them with my prayers, that, that takes too much time. Oh, stay with me, folks. We need to get in the devil's way. Listen to this. Things that will help us and then we're going to close to get in the devil's way. Number one, we got to get our faith together. We got to give up everything in our lives for God. See, that sounds so easy. It sounds so easy when I say we got to give up everything for God. We got to have the faith to step out and say, God, I'm going to give up everything in my life for you. But that's not easy to do. Because guess what? Life comes at us and we begin to get focused on our life. We begin to get focused on the things we need. Our jobs come at us. We spend all of our time in our jobs every day. And, and you, you, you can't say I don't know about it because I, I get caught up in it too. Every day my, my whole life, I, I pour my whole day into it. And by the time I get home and, and I can't focus, I can't. And we, we put everything in that, but we, we miss and we lose out on God. He has to become everything in our lives. We have to put Him first. We have to be obedient, put Him first in our life. We, we have to get rid of the things that separate us from Him. That's talking about the sins and, and the things that we're doing that puts roadblocks and things in between uh, uh, me and Him. We have to get rid of those things. We have to work on those things. And the last thing I want to share with you is we have to make up our minds to get in the devil's way. I've been looking at things different now since God put this message in me. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is I don't pray for myself. And a lot of times I, I get up and say, God, I just pray for your protection today. I pray that you keep me where I need to be. I pray that you put people in my life. And, and those aren't bad prayers. But now when I get up in the morning, I say, God, help me. Lord, help me get in the way. If the devil has a plan for somebody today and they're in trouble, God, use me to step right in his path and stand in the gap. Father, don't let me stand before you someday and you look down on me and say, I tried my best to get you to stand in the way, but I couldn't find anybody. We need to pray every day. We have so many opportunities. See, some of you don't realize the opportunities you have to stand in the devil's way. You need to start seeing things as opportunity. You know, one of the things, and, and it's going to sound like pastors preaching at you, and I'm not preaching at you. I'm just talking about the opportunities that God puts in front of us. We have Awana programs. We have all these things that are coming up. Chances to get in the devil's way with someone's life. And we need to take those opportunities. Take advantage of them things. We have a chance sometimes to, to make a phone call to somebody that's in serious trouble and stand in the gap for them and get in the devil's way. This church, I'm going to tell you right now, God has put a peace
peace in me. He's put a rest in me. He is leading this thing. He's guiding this thing. And this church is going somewhere. But guess what? The devil has a plan for this church. And if we don't get it his way, he's going to have his way. And guess what? I'm getting in his way. Whatever it takes, I'm getting in his way. However much time it takes in my day, I'm getting in his way. However much time it takes on my knees, however much more my time it takes to go and see somebody, whatever it takes, whatever I have to do to get in his way, I'm committed to it today because my mind is made up. I will get in his way. I will not stand back and let him have my children. I will not stand back and watch him take my grandchildren. I will not stand back and watch him come after you and take you and do what he has to do with you. I will stand in his way. And today God is looking for people who will stand up to the plate. Say, God, I'll get in the way. Help me. Encourage me. Sister Ray, come on up. How many know that God truly, truly, truly needs us. See, you, you can say, oh, God don't need me. Well, God will do it without you. But God needs you. God desires that you are the one who steps up and he uses. You are the one that God wants to speak through. See, sometimes we, I think we'd speak a little better if we knew we were speaking God's words. We were being used of God. Then we'd step out a little bit more and get in the devil's way a few more times. But as we close today, I want to leave you with this. Somehow, some way, when you see the devil working, get in his way. Step out there. Step out on faith. Step out, step out on obedience. Step out on whatever it takes within you. Step out there and get in his way. Do whatever you got to do to mess up his plan. Oh, it feels so good. There are times when I see where God has used me to mess the devil's plan with. Oh, he, the devil gets so mad at me. And I just stand back and I laugh and I say, hey, I'm so glad God's on my team. Because guess what? God's going to win this thing. It's already done. His plan's intact. It's not going to be altered. And he really, really, truly wants us to be part of it. And today, that's all it is, is us being part of his plan. Stepping out and getting in the way. I prayed the other day and I said, God, And I've shared this with you before. But God has called me to another place. It's uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Next year, things are going to totally be different. I'm just telling you now. Totally different. But guess what? It's part of getting in the devil's way. Amen. I'm willing. I'm ready. I'm able. Through him, I'm able. Change hurts. Change is difficult. God is moving us. I, I don't know. Some of you may be in the corporate world and you may be up the ladder and you may be in the quality and all these things and everything. But there was a time of period where this, this book was written. And man, it, it's a little video book and it was written and it became one of the highest, one of the, the most sold books in the corporate world. And it was called, Who Moved My Cheese? Some of you are smiling, laughing, yeah. And God spoke to me the other day and he said, I'm going to do some things in people and they're going to think I've left. They're going to think that, that I've moved away and I don't care about them anymore. They're going to really go through some things is what he's saying. And what God is saying is, hey, don't worry about it. I've not gone anywhere. I've just moved. I've moved to Jesus. And now you need to follow it. Because I'm taking you another place. I'm bringing you to another place. 
some of you are here today and you're sitting here thinking, I don't know how in the world I even came here. I don't even know why I'm here. I just came and I like it. So I kept coming back. And, and you think it's just by chance. But you don't realize God's moved and God says, I, I want you to move with me. I've got a plan for you. And by moving and being obedient to God, you stepped in the devil's way. You messed up his plan. God has a plan for you. See, I truly believe that if we start to look at it this way, that when I move in life, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it's hard. And change is, is difficult. But if I do it, it ends up being a great thing. He hasn't left you. Look at your neighbor and say, he hasn't left you. He just moved to another place. I told him one time, I said, if you leave me, and I know how Moses felt. I said, Lord, if you leave me, kill me. Just kill me. Because guess what? I don't want to do this without you. Moses told him one time, he said, God, if you're going to kill the people, just kill me too. Ooh, boy, is that dangerous? Think about that. Look at God, the creator of all things. Look at him in the eye and saying, hey, if you're going to kill them, kill me too. But see, God knew what he was saying. And God knows what I'm saying when I say, God, I can't live without you. I need you so I can get in the way of the devil's plan. Bow your head, let's close your eyes. I'm going to ask this question. Some of you in here may be guilty of sitting back and watching Satan just do whatever he wants to do with your children, with your grandchildren, with your friends, with your neighbors. With your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad, I, I don't know. But somehow you just sit back. Satan's been busy and you just kind of just been standing there. If you're here today and you say, I don't want to do that anymore, raise your hand. I want to be a fighter. I want to get in the way. Amen. All over the place. Stand here for you, if you will. this message has challenged you today to look around you and see the needs that are around you and encourage you in your heart to step out and get in the way to mess up the devil's plan this morning in my office as I was praying I said God I have to preach this message because you gave it to me but God I'm praying right now that our church our church right here at this place gets in the devil's way every day we get in the devil's way somehow God Satan has a plan against us but I pray that we're used and we get in the devil's way somehow I believe that's going to happen we're already in his way he's already mad at us he tries to do stuff to us and he raises stuff up and he, he brings stuff up and man, he, he gets stuff working and guess what God does? God sits back and says, nice try. And we step right out in his way. And today, we're going to pray. And as we close, I want you to grab a hold of this. God's going to use you to get in the devil's way if you allow him to. He'll speak to you. He'll show you. He'll give you opportunity to step in the devil's way. Some of the young people here, they may not realize it, but just in school, God will use you to step in the devil's way. Yep. He really caused a big mistake. And see, here's the thing. 
we'll, we'll close with a prayer here in just a second. Here's the thing. See, David, we learn a lot from David as a shepherd. So you may not realize that you are the shepherd of your children, your grandchildren. And David had sheep to take care of. And the Bible says that every time a bear, a lion, came in to steal his sheep, y'all know what he did. Tracked him down. He said, uh-uh, I'm getting in your way. You're not taking my sheep. And see, God is wanting that from us. He's wanting us to realize that around us, we've been put shepherd, we've been in charge of things that he's gave us charge over. And we need to stand up and get in the way and quit standing back and watching it happen. So today as we pray, take it with you. Be encouraged by it. God's going to start using you to get in the way. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you speak to us through your word. And God, even though we live in unholy times, we have you. You're still in control. You're still in charge. Your plan is intact. And it will never be altered. God, I just pray for us today. God, you've brought us where you've brought us to get in the way. Lord, help us today to get in the devil's way. God, encourage our hearts. And Lord, as we're living our lives every day, show us, give us opportunity, God, to step out and say, I'm going to get in the way right here. And I'm going to do what's right. Father, I just pray, use us. Encourage us, help us. Give us those opportunities, Father. Give this church every opportunity, God, to get in the devil's way in this community. And I know you will, Father. Thank you for your word. God, it makes us strong. It challenges us. Let us be challenged today as we leave this place to become better, stronger, more involved to mess up the devil's plan. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory in all your word, Father. In your precious name. Amen and amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Look, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get in the way. I'm going to ask Brother Rick if he'll dismiss us in prayer. God bless you. We love you. Don't forget Wednesday night we're having our Iwana meeting at 8. Some of you may come a little early and see how we do things on Wednesday night. You might like it. We do a lot of teaching on Wednesday night. And there's a lot of good things happening. God bless you. We love you. Get in the devil's way this week. Do it some way. Brother Rick.